everybody and welcome to a brand new Animal Crossing New Horizons video. Today we're going to be checking out my Rags to Riches Island because yes, I've been doing this challenge and I don't know if it is because I'm not recording it, but like this has been my luckiest playthrough. First of all, if you don't know, the Rags to Riches is a brand new challenge created by Talk. By brand new, it's not really brand new. It's been out for a while. <laughs> I got kind of late into it, but it is made by the same person that made the hard mode challenge, which I really thrived on, didn't I? <laughs> To be fair, I did a lot more than I showed on my YouTube channel. Like, do you see this? I did this. I designed those codes. And like, I have footage. I just, I get so lazy when it comes to editing. But this time around, I am committed. <laughs> Mainly because I'm not recording everything. But I assure you, I've been following the rules. I have no proof. You just have to believe me. To start out this challenge, I need to start brand new. So, goodbye hard mode. Hello, Rex to Riches. Please give me good maps. Please give me good maps. Okay. Mmm. Okay. <laughs> okay. I don't like any of these. Let's start with this first one. Which has the resident services that is the farthest away from the airport. Now that I look at it, that might be the better option. <laughs> I don't want the double self-facing river. No, I do not. And I also don't like when the resident service building is a little off-center with the airport. I like to have it center, which this one has, but it's so close. But I kind of like the layout of this one, if I'm being honest. This one has a terrible peninsula. This one is slightly better. But it has... Oh, but it has a rock in the water. I love when we have rocks in the water. Like that one. <laughs> Oh, but it, it has one annoying rock. Mmm, <sighs> it has to be this one. We'll take a look. But I think I'm gonna restart again. Here's the thing, I have an idea. And I love when I set out with ideas because I never make them. Uh, <laughs> you know how you have an idea and you go to the island and you start working on that idea and, and you figure out that you, you just can't make it look good and you just give up and you just do whatever you always do. Yeah, um, I have a very specific idea, which I won't say yet what that is. All I'm gonna say is that we're really going to be embracing the island life. For the airport, I would like either an orange or a yellow one. And for fruit, I want something kind of tropical. But honestly, I'm okay with anything but cherries. Should I be this picky? No, I shouldn't. Because I have only two rolls <laughs> for a good map. Still, it doesn't hurt to dream, does it? No. I don't even care about starring villagers because they're not going to be here forever. We don't need to get their pictures this time around. They can go whenever they want to. We just need to give them time and surely they'll move out. The game is taking sweet time. Are you serious? <laughs> I don't want cherries. <laughs> this is an immediate reroll. I mean, I don't mind the green airport though. Cody and Plucky. I think this is a, a reroll. Let me just see how close this really is. How bad it is. Oh, it's so bad. <laughs> Bye. This is our last roll for a good map. Let's pray to our gods, Timmy and Tommy, for a good map. I don't think I restarted when I was rolling for my hard mode island. There's just a huge risk. And it kind of feels like there's this curse. If you re-roll, you're gonna get terrible villagers. But I mean, in this challenge, doesn't really matter now, does it? Okay, here we have them. Okay. These are a lot better. So it's really between top left and bottom right. This one is such a good map. The building is super far away. It's centered with the airport. And I honestly really like that pond next to the entrance. <laughs> but this one is actually centered. And it has a rock in the water. I don't know. I mean, if you see a map that has the airport entrance actually centered with the building, I feel like you gotta pick it, right? You gotta. It's a no brainer. Let's hope this wasn't a big mistake. <laughs> We have oranges. That's tropical. <gasps> Are you serious right now? I'm giving me Teddy. <laughs> In a yellow airport. This is... You know how when you re-roll, things go terribly wrong? This is one of those moments. I need to let them both go in order to finish the challenge. But I don't want to let them go. <laughs> the one time I could have sucky starter villagers. No. I don't know what to do now. And that was when I stopped recording. 
At first I was going to do a series on this challenge, but no, I don't want to do this anymore. And so now you're asking, then are you doing the challenge or not? I am, but if Teddy ever asks me to leave, the challenge is over. It's game over. That is what I decided to do and so far it's been going well. We are currently on day 55 and Teddy is still among us. And if you guys are not familiar with the Rags to Riches challenge, it is similar to the hard mode challenge, but this one has classes. There are four different classes and depending on the class that you pick, you get different perks and also some advantages. I decided to call my island brain Lily as an homage to my old island Lily pad, which means we're going with the forger class. As a forager, I can sell fish, forageables, fossils, and tree items directly to me and Tommy, and I can deny campsite villagers, but only after I acquire a durag. I also gotta complete the fossils and see creature creepiness, and every time I see Sahara, I gotta pay 20k fee, which honestly, it's not too bad. Forger really seems like the best class if you want to enjoy the game without it being too restricting. Because challenges are fun, sure, but you have to enjoy it, otherwise you're just gonna give up. Okay, map reveal. This is how things are looking like. These are my villagers. And this is what I mean by me being lucky. I've been extremely lucky. <laughs> I started out with Teddy and Renee, which you guys saw. I villager hunted. I, I did villager hunts for every single one of these villagers, except Queenie. I did a hunt, but I didn't find anybody good, so she autofilled. She's not too bad. I had her in New Leaf, and I actually loved her there. I, I don't know. I, I guess I prefer pixelated form. <laughs> She looks better there. I found Zucker, Shino, and Sky while villager hunting for the first free plots. I got super lucky with Shino. Even Zucker. I know at the moment the octopus species is not at the top 10, but like he should be because it's super easy to find them on villager hunts. We, we should play smart people. Just saying. Not because I, I have Zucker, but like, just saying. <laughs> Think at how easy it will be. Raymond was my first campsite villager, and I think this is the first good campsite villager I got. I mean, I don't know how to feel about Raymond. It is not someone that I really, really wanted, that like I dreamed of having, but like this is my first time having him in the game and seeing him in, in game, you know? I, I cannot lie. I do feel a little bit special in having him now. And it's just awesome because he's a top 10. <laughs> By the way, if you don't know, I'm gonna leave the link to the rules in the video description. But like one of the end game objectives for my island is to have two villagers on my island that are on the top 10 tier list on the Animal Crossing portals website. And that tier list changes every month. So when I set it out, even though it was August in the game, when I started out in real time, it was July. And things changed a lot since then. Uh, at the moment, I have uh, four villagers on my island that are on the top 10. So you know what? I am good. And part of me kind of wishes I could cross that goal off my list because I would love to get some actual dreamies on the island. But like, whatever, I, I guess. I don't know, if you are doing the challenge, are you crossing that goal off and just moving on with your day or... Do you need to have them in the end game, like w when you get to five stars and you complete all the other goals? Because that's gonna take a while. <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna last until then. Teddy can leave at any moment. It's been stressful. It's been really stressful. I have had a few jump scares and honestly, I should be compensated for stress my villagers that put me under. Sure was the next one to move in. Got super lucky as well. Then Queenie, she out of field, whatever. Uh, then I found Sasha. And I remember I had, uh, I think it was Olivia at the campsite. I've been getting a lot of cats at my campsite, which honestly, I feel blessed. <laughs> I had her at the campsite and I only had one more plot free on my island for someone to move in. And I thought, you know what? Let me put the plot down. I'm gonna villager hunt. And if I don't find somebody good, at least I have her and she's not a bad villager, you know? But I found Sasha. I've been super lucky. And then one of my villagers asked me to leave. I honestly don't remember who it was. <laughs> Was it Diana? Was she the only villager that left? I've been taking screenshots, but like, there's so many of them, I'm kind of scared to look. Yeah, the only other villager I had that left was Diana. Oh wait, no, Tasha! I rem I'm, I can't believe I forgot about her. <laughs> I found her on a hunt, got super happy because I actually really like Tasha, but like, she left super quickly. And I think that's why I forgot about her completely. <laughs> she actually hurt me. Um, but I found Faith and she was one of my dreamies for like the final islands. Uh, so I, I'm, I was actually really happy with that. <laughs> it's 
it's okay, it all worked out. Things have been going great in the visual department. Everything else, it's still a little bit, you know, a little bit uncertain, because God knows how long I'm gonna last. Let me actually pull up the rules. The end game objectives. I still haven't purchased a royal crown. I don't have a Fire Star Island, not yet, at least, but like maybe we can make that happen. When it comes to the Critopedia, as a forger, I need complete deep sea creatures, Critopedia, and the fossils collection. I've got everything that I can in these past months that I've been playing, but like if I'm gonna complete this, Teddy is gonna need to stay on my island until March, uh, which I don't think it's gonna happen. <laughs> like, I've been avoiding talking to him, because, like, the closer you are to someone, the more likely they are to ask you to leave, but, like, it's still random, it's very random. There's no way, there's no way I can make it until March. If I do... <laughs> I'm gonna be the luckiest son of a god. I could also time... No, I cannot, I cannot time travel. The only way I can do this is if I just put the game down and pick it back up again in March and just go deep sea diving and complete it. <laughs> <laughs> Which, I mean, it's an option, but like I've been enjoying playing the game way too much. Thing is, the reason why I started this challenge was because lately I've been stuck on a um, restarting phase. Like, I just cannot commit to an island. And I don't know if anyone has ever been through one of these. Like, you just leave your island and then you, you know, you start up your game. But like, after you get three stars and you unlock the terraforming, you just get so overwhelmed. And the idea you have, you know, you just cannot make it happen. And you get so frustrated that you just restart completely. And so this year, every time that I picked up the game, it was just for me to start an island and then delete it. I could not commit. And I think one of the main issues is that I would go to Treasure Islands right away, which would give me access to everything and anything I wanted. And so all that I had to do was build, but I was struggling with that. So I would just put the game down and eventually I would restart. So like, even though I, I'm saying that I'm gonna give up on challenge if Teddy asked me to leave. I'm still gonna keep playing in the... Uh, is Sharp walking in his pajamas? I think Queenie gave him those pajamas, actually. Sharp, honey. I wish I could join you, actually. <laughs> I love being comfortable. He's so cute. <laughs> Look at him. Like, even if I stop the challenge, I'm still gonna keep playing on the island. The main reason why I'm giving up is so that I can keep Teddy and that I can keep playing on the island with him. The next goal is to have 10 million bells in my ABD, which uh, it's not looking really super great at the moment. All of my savings going into either my loan or into turnips. Like there's no in between. It's either one or the other. I cannot save any of my money. Like <laughs> there's so many things I wanna get. I have not fully prepared my house, not yet. I haven't even unlocked the storage, which I am dying to. I just gotta pay that fee and then I, I, I'll i get it. It's taking forever. And I only unlocked Reese and Cyrus, Leaf, Red, and Kicks over at Harv's Island. So I still have a long way to go over there as well. I have a lot of top 10 villagers on my island, so that is good. I do not have any gold tools at the moment, but I've been working towards it. You know those sticks that appear on your island that are super annoying and that you gotta pick up and sometimes you don't pick up, you just let them pile up? I've been picking them up every day. And I've been making 10 acts per day whenever I have enough sticks to make 10 of them. I only started doing this like very recently, but my goal is, you know, if I keep doing this whenever I have time, I'm gonna get the gold axe in 10 days. And the gold wiring can, you get it when you get five stars. I'm working towards that. I'm gonna give you guys an island tour in just a second. And the other gold tool that I plan on getting is the, the slingshot because it's just way too easy. We still have a long way to go, but like, when you are building your island, you do end up finding a lot of balloons, so hopefully that will work out for me. The other option is to assess like a ton of fossils, but like, I'm super close finishing the fossils collection. I'm only missing six, I think, at the moment. Like, I got everything here. Let me go check my app here. I am missing the Archelon Skull, the Dainoni Torso, Iguanodon Torso, Plesio Torso, Spinal Tail, and Spinal Torso, which I don't know where they are here in the museum, but like, we 
pretty much got them all. Fossil collection is in the bag. I am also doing the other collections as we need to do everything before we can sell them. So a golden rod could happen. Not sure about the bug net though because I missed a few stacks during August. We have to earn one gold bug off trophy and one gold fishing tourney trophy, which I've got the bug off trophy already. And it was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. I remember the first time I got the gold trophies for both of these tourneys. I remember it was such a drag, but maybe it's just a fishing tourney that is a drag. Like, I don't know. <laughs> the bug off went so well and so fast. We are gonna have the fishing tourney this weekend, which I am not looking forward to. I do not have that much bait at all either. Uh, I was going to go to markets to buy some bait, but I was sick, so yeah, couldn't really do it. I think I'm gonna spend the entire Saturday just doing this and <sighs> I I'm not looking forward to it, not at all. But I, I gotta do it, I really need to make it happen. We need to craft five of the Golden Series DIYs, one pile of cash and one money flooring DIY, which I've crafted none. Uh, I don't even think I have that many of those DIYs actually. Do I have a pile of cash laying around somewhere? No, I do not. Wait, maybe it's here. No, wait. Pile of cash, I do have it. I've not crafted it though. That is a lot of money. Are you serious? Uh, and the money flooring, I don't think I have it either. I have the garbage flooring. That's something. And I think the only gold recipe that I can use is golden gear apparatus. Uh, I have not crafted it though. We have time. And the last goal is to have 25 posts on our community board. I only had one market and four people over, so not a lot of posts here. No, <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna complete this one. Like, I just get so anxious interacting with strangers. I'm terrified I'm gonna mess up something or I don't know. I literally start shaking. <laughs> I'm not even joking, I shake. In a way, I'm thankful not a lot of people came over because I was really freaking out. But like, even if I open up the gates and people just come over freely, I don't think I'm gonna get enough posts. I honestly kind of give up on this. <laughs> and I gave up on the markets. It was fun. But like, I don't know how I would incorporate a market in my island, honestly. But now that we got the goals out of the way, let's focus on the island and what I've been working on. Do you guys remember me saying that I had an idea? Yeah, that I didn't it happen. <laughs> what were you expecting? I mean, it's still tropical, but like, it's not my original idea. And I will tell you what my original idea was. And maybe one day I'll make it happen in Animal Crossing, but... I wanted to make an island inspired by Ginger Island from Stardew Valley. Not make like a complete recreation, but like take inspiration from it. Cause like we have those stalls right at the front at the entrance, which would fit perfectly for the challenge. We have our farm, which is our house. And you know, we, if you want to make money, you gotta have a farm. You have the area where Leo lives and it's very lush. So you would have not only some tropical elements, but also some jungle core elements thrown in. Also the volcano on the back. No idea how we would make that happen, but it would be so cool to figure that out. It didn't happen though. The current team is still tropical, but abandoned. And also with some kit core elements, because I, I just, I gotta have some cute stuff laying around. It's me we're talking about. I gotta have color. So this crawl path, it's supposed to be like a road but like a really worn down road. And the main idea is to make the island look like it was once lived in, but it was abandoned and then nature took over and gyroids also took over and kind of looked after the place until we stumbled foot onto the island and now we're slowly bringing it back to life and giving it back its color. For the entrance, I knew I wanted a little parking area with some bikes and also some cars. I do not have cars. I have not found them on the Nook shopping app. Like one day we'll have some cars here and it will all make sense. <laughs> Over to the right, I, I wanted a crafting area. Since I'm a forager, I'm the only island that you can come to to craft specific items for your end game objectives. So if people want to come over, you know, my crafting table is right here, right at the entrance. We also have a little waiting area. I really, adore this entrance. We also have like these weeds, which I've been dying to use. So there's sort of the supernatural vibe with the island too. And I mean, we have gyroids. 
I did want to make this place look sort of magical. And it is during the night that this place really, really shines. It is so beautiful. Uh, up on this incline, I have my shops. I have Nook's Cranny right over here. This area is not finished whatsoever. <laughs> I mean, I just placed down the Able Sisters and I'm gonna need to move them because I misplaced it. I need to push it back one more tile and also a little bit to the right because I think this area here is a little a little bit too close for comfort and I can't place an incline here and that's the bigger issue. <laughs> I need to move the shop. I need an incline here. Uh, but this is my farm. Uh, it's still a work in progress. I literally just did it. We have all the crops. I don't think we have a limit for crops if you're not a farmer which i am not which is also kind of weird because i feel like the farmer would have more farming spots but they have a limit <laughs> but the other classes do not i don't see anything on the rules about that so like i can have however many i want life's good for a non-farmer i mean most of these are going to be decorational but like Yes, yeah, so I wanted to have every single one of them. We have gyroids all over, as if they're looking after the farm. One thing that I'm missing is a, a lot more pumpkins. I need pumpkins, dude. I I'm also planning to put a villager here. I don't know which one I'm gonna move over to here. Like some of these are my dreamies. They are all my dreamy, my final dreamy list for this island. That is one of them. Shino is a bit of a maybe, because I might replace her with Adi. Thing is finding Audi. Faith is a dreamy, Sasha is also a dreamy, and Raymond is also a bit of a maybe, because like I have him and I, I feel sort of powerful <laughs> having him. It was my first good campsite villager, I feel like I gotta keep him. And like out of those, I don't think any of them fit the farming scene. Skywood, but she is not a dreamy. So although I plan to move someone here, I'm not sure which one yet. So yeah, it's gonna remain empty. I would like to keep the heart bond actually, because I really like it. Now, whether it's gonna work out with my terraforming, I have no idea. I mean, only time will tell. But this gravel path here, I plan to connect it to the parking lot at the entrance because I want the roads to make sense on the island. I don't want to just have a parking spot and no roads for the cars to travel. You know, so it's gonna go all around, over through here. It's also gonna go around resident services, so it's gonna go over through here, all the way to the parking spot down here. And it's gonna be beautiful. <laughs> I mean, also connected to some of the homes, but like, I'm not sure what I'm gonna put any of my villagers yet, so... Yeah, that'll be for another time. This was kind of a short tour, but like, this is it. This is all I have at the moment. <laughs> This is it. <laughs> when it comes to designs, these are all the designs that I'm using at the moment. I mean, some of these might change over time. I did make some of these, like this crosswalk. I recreated the original design made by Crystal Cat so that I could make these. Also, these little... I think you would call them shock, but like, since this is a pebble path, maybe it's painted. <laughs> It's not exactly chalk. This design here, I based it off another one that I saw, so I don't feel super comfortable sharing it. Is Sharp thinking? Sharp. I don't think it's about moving out, is it? Oh, come on. <laughs> I was actually hopeful, Sharp. Now we got matching stuff, okay. Cool, awesome. I don't feel comfortable sharing it because it's not my original design. I copied it off of someone and just changed the colors to kind of match the color palette of this island. So yeah, like I can show you what it looks like on the grid so you can recreate it. Like these are the colors. You can pause and copy. And this is how it looks like on the grid. And I also made the flag which I always tend to do. I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep it, but like, I like to design my flags. And at the moment, I don't really have any other ideas of what I should do for the flag, you know? So it's gonna stay like that for now. But who knows in the future. All of these codes are gonna be in the video description, probably in the form of a link. If I can find them all on Pinterest, I'm just gonna link you guys to a Pinterest folder. That would be ideal, but I don't know. I, I, I do not know. I can tell you though that I'm using a lot of crystal cat signs. Like this road, this sidewalk, this tangy tile, the grate, the flower, these tiles, this milk, this journal, this picnic, <laughs> these planks, 
these styles here. They're all by Crystal Cat. <laughs> and I think this is where I'm gonna be ending today's video. Hold up a second. There's a balloon. Balloon. Uh, balloon, please don't disappear. Oh, thank God. <laughs> When they fly a little bit too close to resonance stars, I get a little nervous. Nice money. I do hope you guys enjoy this video. And until next time, there's probably gonna be a next time. Teddy's gonna ask me to leave us some points. Or maybe he won't and I'll come back on March to fill you guys in on a complete career period. My gosh, those dragonflies need to get away from me. I do hope... Why is he still here? Uh, is he stuck? Like in my country, we call dragonflies eye takers. <laughs> Tira olhos. Although there's other names for them, but like that, that is one of them. And it validates my bug phobia, which is nice, you know? Like I was saying, I hope you guys enjoy this video. And until next time, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Goodbye, everybody. Take care.